family, welcome back to my channel. So today for you guys, I have a long overdue video. It is some Five Below DIYs. I have not done one of these videos in almost two years. So I'm going to be taking some Five Below products and bringing it up a notch. It's very easy to do. It's kind of like when I do the Target Bullseye Playground DIYs. The product is already good on its own. It's just something you could do to bring it up a notch or make it suit your type of decor. So I hope you guys enjoy these DIYs. I'm sorry the lighting isn't the best in these videos. Lately I've only been able to film at night time so I'm kind of like figuring out lighting and stuff um, just because that's really what I could do it because Cooper is asleep. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do make sure you give it a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments below if you want to see another Five Below DIY. I'm thinking of using the little rolling cards you can get right now to do one so let me know if that's something you want to see. Anyways with that being said let's begin the video. For our first Five Below DIY, I'm going to be using this wood grain table that I picked up for $5. I wish so bad I bought two of these because I've been using it to film DIYs on top of and I love it. For this DIY, I'm going to be using Weave Cane Webbing. This is my first time using it. People call it rattan and I really wanted to try something like this because of a YouTuber called Lone Fox. I really love his DIYs and his decor is not really my style but after seeing it it's like oh I really want that type of decor. He's gotten me really into that like boho modern type of decor. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the fabric and I am placing the top of my wood grain table on top of it and then I'm just tracing the top of it down. So initially when I started to cut this I was thinking oh I'm gonna staple the fabric under the table but as I was cutting and kind of bending it to go under the table I realized that the staple gun that I have was just gonna go right through the table and break it so then I just decided to cut a circle piece that would just go straight on top of the table rather than part of it going on the sides and then under the table I'll link down below where I got my uh, weave cane. I think people call it rattan or something like that, but I'll link it down below for you guys. I just purchased from the place that Lone Fox purchases from. I'll link him down below for you guys as well. So the fabric comes all rolled up and what you have to do is kind of unroll it so that it doesn't keep rolling up on you. So to take away all of those creases, you want to get a sponge and some hot water and just place the sponge on top of the fabric just kind of pouncing it around then you want to blow dry it and this will help take away the creases and keep it laying flat versus all rolled up and bunched up on you and then you're just having a hard time doing anything with it once I have this all flattened out I go ahead and take it and place it on top of the table to adhere this to the table I used hot glue and I applied it around the edges of the fabric and the table not in the center of it I just made sure it was like nice and tight and then I glued it down now you can see some of the glue through the holes but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up covering that up I think it's more time-consuming if you want to glue like where the center of the um, fabric is just because you don't want any glue to be showing that's the thing you don't want glue to be showing through the holes so you really got to take your time with it if you're trying to glue it um, at the center of the table this was my first time using this type of stuff I just watched some YouTube videos trying to figure out how I wanted to place it down I saw a lot of people use wood glue but this wood grain is not real wood and then you know I'm on short amount of time I'm filming this at nighttime when Cooper's sleeping so it's I just gotta rush things next up I'm actually taking a rubber window sealer I'm going to be using this to place around the sides of the table so this is going to cover up any glue that's showing and it's also going to cover up any edges that are kind of a little wonky when you're cutting that weave caving I recommend having a very sharp scissor you don't want to use anything dull otherwise you're gonna have a hard time and you're gonna keep making it kind of fall apart I paid five dollars for that rubber window seal and it worked out really well for me the only thing is the next day where the two ends of it meet it was falling off a little bit so I recommend adhering it with some glue and that's it for the table I love the way that it came out it reminds me of growing up we used to have chairs that had that type of material on it I don't know if you guys had it because I feel like every house had it. Anyways, it came out so beautiful and I still have material left over and that rubber seal to make another table. Our next DIY is so simple. From Five Below, I got this tray table. This one was $5 and essentially the top of it can be moved around and you can just use it as a tray. 
So to this one, what I'm gonna be doing is adding some marble contact paper so I can really glam this thing up. You can find marble contact paper at your local hardware store. You're just gonna find it where the contact paper shelf liners are. I got this one at Home Depot. All I'm doing is I'm cutting it down to fit the inside of my tray, which was 13 inches by 13 inches. Because of Cooper, I've been having to film at nighttime, so I'm sorry if the lighting isn't the best. I have to figure that situation out because I feel like I'm gonna be filming at nighttime for quite a while. After I have my contact paper cut, I go ahead and remove the backing off of it and I just stick it to the center of my tray. It's a self-adhesive type of paper, so you just go ahead and stick it straight down. I decided to cut smaller pieces that would go around the bottom edges of the tray. I recommend using some double-sided tape or a type of school glue to glue it down because when you cut it so thin, I feel like the adhesive isn't the best. And I say school glue because hot glue, if you try to do it, you might burn your finger or it might end up bubbling under the paper and end up looking funny. And it might actually end up burning the paper too and it'll like crunch up on you. I just used a strong double-sided tape and it worked out perfect for me. And then that's all I did to this. Look how that contact paper just took it up a whole notch. So if you're into that like glam decor look, this is so easy to do. $5 for the table and then another $5 to add the marble look to it but then you end up with a bunch of contact paper left over that you can use for other projects and if you don't really have any ideas on how to use that marble contact paper i do have a bunch of tutorials on my channel using it especially dollar tree tutorials so it's another inexpensive uh, options on my channel anyways the next diy we're going to be using this natural linen footstool now this footstool is very very low and i really can't see anybody beside a child using it as a footstool i'm basically going to be using it like a plant stand so what i ended up doing is purchasing this shelf liner i got it at home depot i really like the look of it so all i'm doing is i'm taking that shelf liner and i'm going to be attaching it to the top of the stool so i go ahead i had to use a pen for this and you don't want to really want to use like a marker because it might end up transferring to the fabric so i used a pen to kind of trace out the top of the stool and then i cut it out to attach this to the top of the stool i ended up using hot glue i had purchased decorative pins so there was like a gold just little ball at the top of the pin but I couldn't find it so I had to go with like my plan B which is just using hot glue at the top if you know how to like sew this in you can go ahead and do that but I don't know how to do that so I just ended up using hot glue to attach it next up I purchased a bunch of these tiny little tassels for inexpensive price on Amazon they're already made it's simple for me to do, but if you want to make your own tassels, you can. And I'm just going to be gluing them to the stool. Again, my plan was to use the pins that I bought. It's just push pins and push it into the fabric. And you can tell inside of there, there's like a type of foam. So it would have pushed in nicely. And that's how I was going to attach all of the tassels, but I couldn't find the pins. So instead, I ended up hot gluing them. And when I hot glued them, I tried to kind of hot glue the top under that weave liner just so it kind of blended in better i added the tassels to the top and to the bottom and then i decided to kind of give it that push pin look though and i ended up using some gold beads from dollar tree and gluing them to the top of the bottom tassels and it kind of gives a look of what i was trying to go for with the push pins it was just push pins that had a gold little ball at the top of it and you can find them at dollar tree you can find them at other craft stores walmart wherever it might be my original plan was to glue the beads to the top and the bottom tassels but it was like 2 a.m and i had to go to bed and then now it's the next day and i don't have time to do that i just have time to finish this but this is how my footstool came out i like it so much better this way than the other way and like i said it's more of a plant stand for me because it's very very small i do think if i put the beads all all around the top of it the edges it would look better but hey that's what it is for our next DIY I'm gonna recreate something that I had at my wedding from five below I picked up this lantern there is no glass inside of this lantern so I am going to be using real flowers to create just a pretty little floral lantern and this is what I had at my wedding I purchased these three bundles of flowers from my local grocery store it's eucalyptus baby's breath and hydrangeas or hydrangeas I don't know what it's called and then you're gonna to want to get a dish and some wet foam 
you only need wet foam if you are using real flowers and you want that wet foam so that your flowers have a constant water source. So what you do is you take your dish, the dish I got for 29 cents when I bought the flowers, and then you're going to cut your foam to fit inside of the dish. So you might have to cut the corners a little bit of the foam, um, the edges. You just got to figure it out until it fits the inside of your dish. Now you do want to tape the foam in place if you're going to be moving this thing around, especially if you're going to use it in transit to get to a wedding or something. I recommend using a thinner tape than what I'm using. This is just all I had on hand. It's just like regular scotch tape and you will just want to place it on top of the foam and go under the dish and attach it down there under the dish. I'm also using some white roses. Now to any flowers that you have, you want to remove any petals that are dead, any unnecessary leaves, especially the ones that are like on roses. You just want to remove them because it makes the look look more clean and also like if you leave those dead looking petals there, it's going to make your whole centerpiece look dead. So you just want to remove any unnecessary petals or leaves. So I did that to all of my flowers and then I start to place them inside of the foam. I start off with the main flowers which are the biggest flowers and I put them on the side. I only had two of them and then I added the roses and I like to start off with the flowers that are like the nicest I guess to me because I want to make sure that I have them placed exactly where I want them to be and then I add the fillers and I fill it just around the main flowers. So my fillers were baby's breath and eucalyptus. Eucalyptus hangs down so I made sure I put that at the bottom especially so it covered up my tray. And you just do whatever you like, use whatever flowers you want. When you're using flowers like the roses it's good to cut the stem in an angle because it helps it go in the foam more nicely and also it helps it absorb water better. We had a couple of these at my wedding and then at my sister's wedding she had a lot more than I did. It's really pretty and it's inexpensive to do so if you have a wedding you know I I don't know how weddings and all that are working right now but I mean if you're having a wedding a small wedding anytime soon this is really inexpensive to do and it's so pretty. So I hope you guys enjoy all these five below DIYs. If you want to see another one let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for Oh, what did I just say? Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.